building today is the Good Shepherd Sunday, the second Sunday after Easter. And the epistle will be again the other side of San Antonio. The first Peter, first epistle of St. Peter, chapter 2, for the second Sunday after Easter. Dearly beloved, Christ suffered for us, leaving you an example. So you should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who when he was reviled, did not revile. When he suffered, he threatened not. But delivered himself to him that judged him unjustly. Who his own self bore our sins in his body upon the tree. That we, being dead to sins, should live to justice, by whose stripes you were healed. For you were as a sheep going astray, but you are now converted to the shepherd and bishop of your souls. In the Gospel, taking that word of St. John, chapter 10. At that time, Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for later for his sheep. But the hireling, he that is not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and flyeth. And the wolf catcheth and scattereth the sheep, and the hireling flyeth, because he is a hireling. And he hath no care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me. As the Father knoweth me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for my sheep. And other sheep I have that are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. That's what the word today is. Men, a few considerations on this uh, Good Shepherd Sunday. Remember that it is enough that we know God. We have to know God in a world that does not know Him. And that we have to love God in a world that does not love Him and serve God in a world that does not serve Him. And we have to remember that when we are born, except when Jezma was a few days, 77 days ago, and we we're born, we're born in a battle. We're born in a time in which the, the, where the enemy has surrounded us. We're born in an age where the world, the devil, wants to destroy us. We're not born the friends of God. We're born in a battle. We're born with the devils all around us. So we're all made to know God, but we're in a world that does not know Him. As it says in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 1, He came into the darkness, and the darkness grasped and comprehended Him not. The darkness does not comprehend him. And we're in the world of darkness, it does not comprehend God. So yes, we must know God, but in a world that doesn't know him. We love God in a world that doesn't love him. And this requires a shepherd. And that's why our Lord says, the good shepherd is the one that lays down his life for his sheep. Now, if there were no lies in the world, if there were no darts from the devil, if there was no enemy, if there was no Satan, there would be no need for the shepherd to lay down his life for his sheep. If there wasn't someone trying to steal the sheep, someone trying to kill the sheep, there would be no need for the shepherd to lay down his life for his sheep. And the sheep also must be very attentive because the sheep easily get lost. The sheep easily go astray. And so we've got to bring the sheep back to the, to the sheepfold where there is one, she one shepherd and one fold. And so this Good Shepherd Sunday is very important because it is necessary that there be a Good Shepherd. We learn that we must know God, we must love God, we must strive to serve God, but the world doesn't want that. And hence the shepherd must come into the, to the sheepfold and he sees these sheep are wandering over this way, those sheep are wandering that way, these other sheep are going that way, and they're all being pulled away. They must hear the voice of the shepherd. They must attune their ears to the voice of the shepherd. And the shepherd must call together his sheep. And he must recognize that there are wolves. There are wolves trying to eat the sheep and scatter the sheep. That there are devils all around trying to destroy the sheep. So the shepherd, therefore, he has to fight against the wolves. He has to fight against the devils. And one of the great, the great cause, the great cause of the crisis of the church today is that shepherds are not shepherds anymore. They are called shepherds, the priests and the bishops of the church, especially the bishops and the Holy Father. But they are not shepherds anymore, because a shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. And the Lord reserves the word shepherd for the one that lays down his life. 
The one that lays down his life for his sheep, he is the one that is called the shepherd. And the one that, that takes care of sheep because he's paid, and the one that takes care of sheep because he has a kind of affection for them, uh, and that he gets paid for what he's doing, something that he likes, or he likes the benefits that comes from taking care of the sheep, this one is a hireling. And the majority of those who put on shepherd's clothing, and the majority of those who guard over sheep, they are not shepherds. Therefore, our Lord says, I am the good shepherd. And then St. Peter talks about his epistle to the other apostles, to the bishops that he's going to perform. You must follow the example of Christ. He is the bishop and shepherd of your souls, and we must follow the example of Christ. There must be a willingness to lay down the life of the shepherd for the sake of the sheep. And one thing we see right now in this so-called crisis of the coronavirus, which doesn't really exist, it's a very minor thing that's not causing any major trouble in the world, but the reaction to it and the tool of this coronavirus to destroy souls, that is being used quite well, and it's a test, to test to see where our souls stand. And there are shepherds who have decided that as soon as there was danger, they have locked the doors of the church. As soon as they feel threatened that they might lose their status, lose their position, or be threatened in some way, they close the doors of the church. Even before the police came with guns, they closed the door of the church. And this is a great scandal. The shepherd must be ready to lay down his life for his sheep. He has to go where the sheep are and bring the sheep to Christ. And the shepherd that is a hireling doesn't do this. And so there's a little bit of a test going on in the world today. Are there shepherds in our church or are there hirelings in our church? And there are hirelings everywhere. And why does a hireling do bad things? Why does a hireling flee? Does he, is he, does he flee because he has a, a, a fear of wolves? Does he flee because, because of the fact that there is danger? Our Lord Jesus Christ says he flees not because he's afraid of wolves. He doesn't flee because he's afraid of dying. He flees because he's a hireling. That same hireling, what's going to happen to him? What will he do if you attack his house? What will you do if you attack his own personal sheep? Then he will fight. He'll fight to defend his bank account. He'll fight to defend his house. But he is not, but he, this is just a job. He likes taking care of sheep. He thinks it's a nice thing to do. He thinks it's a noble occupation. Many good men and holy men were shepherds before him. He has no problem being a shepherd. He likes the idea of being a shepherd. But then the wolf comes, and he flieth. He doesn't fly because he's having a bad day. He doesn't fly because he's scared. He flies because he is a hireling. And this is the point of Christ. What if the wolf never comes? He's still a hireling. What if he never sees the wolf? He's still a hireling, and his own, the sheep are not, and therefore he's not feeding his sheep, he's not feeding his sheep, he's not feeding his sheep, as Christ was demanded St. Peter to do. Simon, son of John, lovest thou me? Feed my lambs. Simon, son of John, lovest thou me? Feed my lambs. Simon, son of John, lovest thou me? Feed my sheep. If we love Christ, if the shepherd loves Christ, then he will love what Christ loves. And Christ loves the sheep. And he lays on his life for his sheep. And he goes to gather his sheep. And so we have to pray in the church that the priests of God, who are meant to be shepherds, and especially the bishops, that are meant to be shepherds, that they learn to take on their vocation, to get the grace to take on their vocation, to, to love the sheep and to be ready to lay down their lives for the sheep because the, 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 why were they not willing to do it? Because their own, the sheep are not. You go after my life, I am ready to fight. You back a coward in a corner, and he has no place to go, he will fight. But if you go after something that is not his, he will let it go. And so therefore our Lord says, why is it that, the, that, that this man does not fight? Why is it that he flees? Because he is a hireling. And his hirelingness there is always there. The wolf is not always visible. The attack is not always happening or doesn't appear to be happening. And he doesn't always run, but he is always a hireling. And the bishop that is always a hireling, the priest that is always a hireling, the pope that is always a hireling, whose own the sheep are not, who doth not have the love of the sheep, 
These ones are very displeasing to God, and they are not able to feed and feed the sheep. They give food, but it's the husks. It's the husk spoken of by the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 15, where it says the prodigal son ate the husk, and the husk is a kind of bean which is empty on the inside. We're feeding you beans, but when you look inside, there's no nutrients, there's no protein, there's nothing inside the bean. It's just a shell. And you eat the shell, and eat the shell, and eat the shell, and you come out more hungry than you were before. And the priests of the church of the last of the last 2,000 years, St. John Chrysostom says, unfortunately, the majority of the priests of the church, the vast majority of the bishops of the church, they are hirelings. And they might read the actual words of God. I'm going to read to you what the scripture says. And they read the actual words. I'm going to teach you what the catechism teaches. And they teach the actual teaching. And yet the food does not enter the sheep. The food does not fill the sheep. They go out and they are as empty as when they came in, or they're more empty when they came in, because it's not enough to say the words. It's not enough to teach the doctrine, because after all, I am not hired to be a priest in order to teach. I am a priest in order to die. I am a priest in order to feed the lambs, feed the lambs and feed the sheep, in order to die for the sheep, to lay down the life for the sheep, because the sheep are my own. And here is the problem of the, of the world today, and not only today, but the last 2,000 years, but especially since Vatican II. The shepherd is no longer a shepherd. We have to pray that the Lord of the harvest send us shepherds, and that those shepherds that have been handed over to us, have been given to us, learn about their vocation. It is not enough to teach a catechism. It's not enough to preach a truth. It is enough to, there must be a love of the God, who gave us the sheep. And that love of the God that gave us the sheep makes us love the sheep. And then the love of the sheep makes it possible to feed them. And then when the wolf comes, no problem. We repel the wolf. And if we can't repel the wolf, we lay it on our lives for the wolf. It's a very easy thing to do. Lay it on our lives in order to save the sheep. No trouble. If there is love inside of the heart of the shepherd. And this love must be put inside of the heart of the shepherds. And we have to pray for the love of God and the love of souls enter into shepherds that they will no longer be hirelings and become true and good shepherds. Let's pray for that to happen in our church because there are so many of us, we are hirelings. And pray that we be turned into real shepherds and bishops of souls as St. Peter says we must be. And then so in any case, be sure to pray to the Lord of the harvest that he send laborers who are lovers, laborers who are shepherds into the harvest. Because the harvest indeed is great, but the laborers who have love, the laborers that have faith, the laborers that are ready to live by faith and charity in a world that hates faith and have charity, these laborers are so very few. Pray for those laborers into the harvest and open up your eyes and see. Where are we now in this so-called crisis that we have? What is our first worry? Is it the things of God that worry us, that we are not the friends of God? Is it the thing? Does it worry us that we are not in the state of grace? Does it worry us that we are not getting the, the, the food of the sacraments and the food of the faith? No, it worries us that we are not getting our paychecks. It worries us that we are not economically stable. It worries us about the material things. We are not worried about the supernatural things. And we are looking to the answer for material things from the government and looking to the answer from the scientists and from the doctors and from the, from the wrong world. The world of the Antichrist, the world of the devil. We need to look to the answer from the world of Christ. Tune the ears of the Good Shepherd and listen to the Good Shepherd. And the Shepherd is the one who's going to give us the answer to this crisis. Those who know and love God and persevere to the end, these shall be saved. And so let's make sure that we know and love Him in our crises in which we find ourselves. And that we pray to the Lord of the harvest, that He said, laborers of the harvest, who will be shepherds and good shepherds. So it's a bit late. In any case, we'll close it at that. And God bless you all then, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.